So since I started making videos on this channel, I've become absolutely infatuated with the natural beauty of Canada. It's an absolutely stunning, unbelievable almost country. The landscapes are just they blow my mind, honestly. And uh, not only that, about Canada, I love everything. It's history, it's culture, it's amazing, friendly people. But I want to do some more research and educate myself on the places of Canada, the cities, the towns, every part of Canada. And I thought a good way to do that would be to look at the individual provinces uh, and where would be good to visit amazing places as this video says amazing places to visit in each province as you can see here we're going to start with British Columbia because as I mentioned on previous videos one place I looked at that or one place I felt like this connection with is Vancouver and obviously Vancouver's in British Columbia but I'd love to know more about the rest of British Columbia what it has to offer I also will be looking at other provinces in a bit more detail as well not just the places but the history and culture of each uh, so tell me recommend the next province to look at tell me what you think about British Columbia uh, what the the best places to visit there tell me if you've been there what you think about it uh, but let's check this out and find out more about British Columbia I mean just to start look at that look at that place this is one location just in British Columbia but this natural beauty can definitely be found all around Canada and it's absolutely stunning. Pretty much any country would be lucky to have a place that looks like that. What's up guys? We're here in BC, Canada's most beautiful province in our opinion. The most beautiful In this video province. we're going to show you the amazing destinations you should visit here. So we've actually lived in BC for a long time, visited all of these places ourselves. So we're really excited to show you them and enjoy this video. Sitting between the Pacific Ocean and the Rocky Mountains, British Columbia is the westernmost province of Canada. It's known to be the most beautiful and diverse province in the country, ranging from rugged coastlines to immense mountain ranges and lush rainforests full of wildlife. The nature and outdoor possibilities are endless here. In this video, we'll show you 14 incredible places that you have to visit in BC. But yeah, as you can see already what he mentioned, it's really got every type of landscape, no matter your interest, uh, what you enjoy doing, it's got basically something for every, everybody with regards to nature. I mean, that people from British Columbia, do you feel that? Do you feel like lucky to actually live there and have this pretty much on your doorstep? All these national parks. Okay, Whistler. Whistler is a resort town in Western BC situated approximately 125 kilometers or 78 miles to the north of Vancouver. It's Canada's most famous skiing and snowboarding destination, with over 2 million people visiting Whistler annually. During the summer, Whistler becomes a hub for mountain biking and hiking. Besides the famous Whistler and Blackhole Mountain, there are tons of other natural attractions within proximity of the town. Visit the impressive Brandywine Falls, find the abandoned train wreck, Go for a night walk at Valle Illumina, or drive up to Pemberton and hike to the magnificent Joffrey Lakes. Whistler will keep you entertained. I mean, that's what I talk about when you got everything. It goes from having like, which look like some of the best ski slopes probably anywhere, to during the winter just having this absolute huge variety of activities that you can do. This is what I like about Canada is the ability to have that outdoor lifestyle, that healthy outdoor lifestyle. If you live in somewhere like Vancouver, to have this in that such close proximity would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, for me, if I lived in Vancouver, I would just never not appreciate this. I would just be like throwing myself into the hiking, visiting those beautiful lakes. I mean, what, tell me more about that train as well. What was that with all the graffiti and things like that as well? Whistler, I feel like I've heard as a resort that maybe people from the USA go to do skiing and things, I think. Uh, but tell me if you visited Whistler, what you think about it? What do you like? What do you enjoy doing there? Stunning. Gary Baldy Provincial Park. Located about 30... Come on. Look at that. That looks like otherworldly, man. Kilometers, or 18 miles to the south of Whistler, Garibaldi Provincial Park is worth mentioning on its own. The 
park is known for its natural beauty and its endless hiking opportunities. There are over 90 kilometers or 56 miles of established hiking trails here. Our favorite ones include Garibaldi Lake, mm. Panorama Ridge, Panorama Elfin Ridge, Lakes, and Chequemus Lake. The deep blue lakes, snow-capped mountains, scenic vistas, and abundance of wildlife is what makes this park truly special. Look at those mountain tops and things as well. Heading up the final ascent here to Panorama Ridge. It's about a kilometer left. It's kind of steep, but really nicely carved out trail. So we're just going up to the top of there. <laughs> that, I just can't get over that place. That must be one of the most naturally beautiful places in the world. I have, I'll be honest, I haven't actually heard of it before and I, that I cannot believe. Uh, but fantastic place. Tell me if you've been there as well. But also I think, I feel like I've asked it maybe before, but if you're from Canada, do you actually make use of these places and use them? I feel like when I lived in Scotland, I now live in Malaysia, as I mentioned before, but when I lived in Scotland, I never really appreciated our national, our, our, like, our these like sort of beautiful locations. I used to live in Glasgow, which is the, like one of the big cities. I used to just stay there, go places here and there, but never really took my time to explore the highlands and different places, which I regret now. I, when I go back to visit, I try and visit. I try and do more of that. But if you're from Canada, you live in a big city. Do you like go and explore these places? Sunshine Coast. The Sunshine Coast is located north of Vancouver, along the Strait of Georgia in BC. It is a 180 kilometers or 112 miles stretch of paradise, surrounded by sandy beaches, endless mountain peaks, dense forests, and small towns. The area is only accessible by air or ferry service, mm. which helps keep it relatively quiet and unexplored by tourists. Yeah, that's why I went to talk Once about Once there, Michigan. you can drive the Coast Highway 101, which takes you from Gibsons in the south all the way to Lund in the north. We decided to base ourselves in Powell River, which is the largest community with breathtaking nature and great outdoor activities all around. Tin Hat Mountain, I like the, I like the names of some of these uh, places. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. What I, what, glad he mentioned that is the thing I like about Canada in comparison to here in Malaysia. Here in Malaysia, you can go to the beaches and you can go to you can go hiking in the forests, the jungles and things. But there's always people. The places that you can visit are always busy. For me, I like when I'm going hiking, when I'm going to beaches, I like to at least have some relative peace and quiet and just appreciate the appreciate nature without too much noise and rubbish and people throwing garbage everywhere and things like that. Tell me if you feel that in uh if you feel that in Canada, when you go to these places, are they quite quiet? Is there a lot of tourists there? Can some of these places get overly busy? Interested to know more about that. But here we go, Vancouver. I want to find. I, I can't help it. Ranked among want to find out as much as I can about Vancouver. I mean, that's what I do like. Also, man, I do love cities. In the world's most there. beautiful and livable cities, Vancouver is a bustling seaport in British Columbia. It's one of Canada's densest and most ethnically diverse cities bounded by beautiful mountains, forests, and beaches. Downtown Vancouver is where most of the action takes place, from the cute Granville Island to the lush Stanley Park and vibrant Gastown. But besides its incredible culture, shopping, and dining, Vancouver is also a paradise for outdoor activities, such as hiking and skiing in its nearby mountains, mm. like Grouse Mountain and Cypress Mountain. Yeah, so I mean, Vancouver just to look at just looks like a beautiful city. Uh, I mean, compared to when I compare it to like Asian cities and stuff, it just looks so clean and like very livable. Uh, a place in uh, uh, another place I really like in this sort of region is Melbourne in Australia, uh, and I, I get kind of similar vibes with regards to like the multicultural nature of the cities as well, how it looks, very modern, with a lot of excellent things around it to do nature-wise as well. If you're from Vancouver, how do you find living there? 
Uh, how easy is it for foreigners to move to Vancouver? We've got a wine region as well, popping, popping in. The Okanagan Valley Okanagan. is located in the south center of BC and stretches over 250 kilometers or 155 miles from Asoyos in the south to Vernon in the north. The region is known for its dry, sunny climate and boasts about 86% of the province's vineyard acreage. Wine tasting is by far the most popular thing to do here, but the panoramic landscapes and immense Okanagan Lake are also great for other activities. Our favorite activities include watching the sunset over Okanagan Lake, floating the Lazy River in Penticton, and biking a part of the KVR Trail. Today we're biking the KVR Trail. It's about 20 kilometers all the way from Naramata down to Penticton. And yeah, we're gonna stop at some wineries along the way and just enjoy the beautiful views. That just sounds too good. Go for a cycle, stop for some wine in the vineyards. I, I never actually knew Canada produces wine so much, but tell me how, how is Canadian wine? Is it really good? Yoho National Park. Yoho National Park lies on the western slopes of the Canadian Rockies, in yeah, eastern yeah. BC. With its exceptional beauty, the park draws travelers from all around the world. Visit this park to see some of the most beautiful waterfalls and take advantage of the outstanding hiking and sightseeing opportunities. Oh, come on. From the incredible Takaka Falls to the turquoise mystical Emerald Lake or the breathtaking Lake Ohara, Canada's nature is at its best in Yoho. Every video I watch about Canada, I just, I cannot help but get like my breath taken away. There's just like these landscapes that are un incomparable to anywhere else. Kootenay National Park is another breathtaking region situated in the Canadian Rockies. Surprisingly, this park is quieter and lesser known than the other national parks in the Rockies. The best way to explore this park is by car, as many of the highlights are just a short hike away from the main road. The Banff-Windermere Highway cuts through the park, from Banff National Park in the north to Radium Hot Springs in the south. And if you keep driving beyond the hot springs to the south, you'll end up in another beautiful town called Invermere. Our favorite thing to do in the park was hike through the Marble Canyon and the paint pots. Paint pots. The paint pots are sacred to the Tunaxa peoples. They are used to harvest the okra beds and ground it to powder. Very interesting. That's not something I've ever actually heard of before or seen anywhere else. Jeez, uh, man, like, it's like, this is just one province. Can you think of the size of Canada, all the other provinces, all of these? I, I feel like not even any other country would have as much as just British Columbia has. Uh, with regards to these natural beauty areas. Mount Assiniboine Provincial Park is another must-visit area in BC and a true hidden gem in the Canadian Rockies. Filled with sparkling glacial lakes wow. and awe-inspiring alpine meadows, this provincial park is a world-class playground for hiking, climbing, camping, and other outdoor activities. However, what is truly special about this place is that it's kept wild. There are no roads that lead to or traverse this provincial park, and it's only accessible by hiking or by helicopter. Highlights include Lake Magog, Nub Peak, Marvel Lake, and of course, Mount Assiniboine itself. Today, we're gonna do the Nub Peak, uh, it's not so far apparently, it's like a 5k to get there, 5k back. Let's hope we get a good view of uh, Mount Assiniboine. Mm. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this video is amazing, man. Great fair play to the creators of this for capturing and visiting so many places that uh, I guess a lot of people around the world would probably will never get to visit these places, but like being able to see these videos and see all these places I've never heard of before, never been able to witness, 
uh, even through video. Uh, I appreciate just being able to watch this video and see these places. Tell me if you're from other parts of Canada. Have you visited any of these? Uh, who do you, have you seen these places before? We're like watching this video. I, I know that maybe like even people from other parts of Canada may not even know if some of these places exist actually because I'm from Scotland. I don't know every place that exists in Scotland. I've not seen like videos of every place. This is like uh, very eye-opening for me actually. It just it really gets that, it gets this burning desire to actually go to Canada. Uh, Vancouver Island. I've seen people mention Vancouver Island. So Located off the southwestern mainland of BC, Vancouver. Vancouver Island is about 460 kilometers or 286 miles long. Stretching from British Columbia's thriving capital of Victoria in the south to Cape Scott's wilderness and hidden beaches in the north, this unique destination combines large forests, rugged landscapes, rocky mountain peaks, and mysterious coastlines. Whether you want to go on a relaxing weekend getaway, explore the jagged landscapes and abundance of wildlife, or conquer the waves of the Pacific, Vancouver Island has it all. Watch our video about 10 incredible places to visit on Vancouver Island to learn more Victoria. about this beautiful place. Mm. Tell me more about Victoria. That's a name I've seen mentioned, uh, but I've not really did too much research into Victoria as of yet. That'll be another place I'll definitely do more research and see a bit more detail about there. How would it compare living somewhere like Victoria to Vancouver? This is obviously on Vancouver Island itself, but uh, is there a difference? Is it like a quieter, laid-back sort of lifestyle? The architecture looks quite traditional and got quite some quite historic-looking buildings. That big building there looked very British, actually, to be honest. Uh, Interested to know more about Victoria, actually, and anybody that lives there or has been there before. So when you come visit downtown Victoria, you should definitely visit the tourism office when you get here because they have a ton of good information on things to do. It's actually located right here in the downtown harbor. So if you're coming by ferry boat or you come by a bus to get to this point or a seaplane, whatever you do, make sure you stop by the information center. Everywhere just looks so well kept. Go feel it. There are 15 Gulf Islands that lie between Vancouver Island and the mainland of British Columbia. With its abundance of wildlife, nature, coastal activities, and laid-back atmosphere, the Gulf Islands are a true paradise. Each of them can be reached by ferry, or in several cases, by seaplane. Go to the forested islands of Hornby, Saturna, or Gabriola if you're looking for peace and quiet in nature. Or visit the largest island, Salt Spring, to visit the most famous Saturday afternoon market and for a more vibrant island scene. That looks so fun to go. I love little markets and places like that. Squamish. Sitting about halfway between Whistler and Vancouver. <laughs> Come on, look at this. Vancouver. Squamish is another beautiful mountain destination. Squamish is a small, authentic town, but its outdoor activities and scenic vistas are what make this place special. Highlights include the cascading Shannon Falls, the iconic rock climbing at Stawamish Chief, and the Sea to Sky Gondola, with endless views of the Howe Sound. Whether you enjoy climbing, hiking, biking, whitewater rafting, or kite surfing, you'll find what you're looking for in Squamish. There can't be many restaurants in the world with a better view than that. I feel like I've seen someone mention Squamish in the comments and maybe said they even lived there. What is it like to live in places like this? Like they are so, like, I mean, they are a bit more remote, I guess, but how is it living in places like this? I can't even comprehend it. As someone who's always lived in cities, especially very highly densely populated cities, uh, I, I enjoy city living, that's what I love, but I, I just, I can't imagine what it would be like to live in a place like this. But I can see a lot of, like, benefits, more, a lot more pros than cons, actually. So many parks in British Columbia. 
Wells Gray Provincial Park is just on the edge of the Canadian Rockies, near the border of Alberta. This beautiful park is famous for its wealth of cascading waterfalls, formed rivers, and lakes that were carved by ancient volcanoes and glaciers. There are about 41 falls scattered around the park, the most iconic one being the Helmkin Falls. I didn't realize Canada has so many huge waterfalls, actually. Being home to the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies and the second highest in BC, Mount Robson Provincial Park is a must-see destination. Also a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site, this area comprises some of the most remote valleys, awe-inspiring lakes, and mysterious mountain peaks that you'll find in all of Canada. The absolute highlight of the area is undoubtedly Mount Robson itself, but there are tons of other natural wonders nearby as well, such as Moose Lake and Yellowhead Pass Historic Site along the scenic Highway 16, or Kinney Lake and Berg Lake along the 46 kilometer or 28 mile Berg Lake Trail. Sweetie, what are you doing? Getting the water. Tell me how it feels to go to these places. I remember the first time I went to the Scottish Highlands, I felt in awe of the sheer size of the mountains and just everything. But these ones take it to like an extreme level. I feel like when you go there, you can say things are breathtaking and like, it's just like a, a kind of term, a term that people use. But I feel like when you go to this place, you would really feel like your breath's been taken. You would just be like in awe of the sheer size of these places. Mount Revelstoke is another incredible place to visit in BC. This park is located right outside the town of Revelstoke in the east of BC and relatively small in size compared to the other parks. It's famous for its blend of colorful wildflowers and compelling history, which you can find along the 26 kilometer or 16 mile Meadows in the Sky Parkway. Being accessible by car, this parkway can easily be explored within a day and combined with other parks in the vicinity, such as Glacier National Park. The province of BC is immense, and of course there are tons of other beautiful places that we haven't mentioned in this video, such as Chilliwack and the island of Haida Gwaii. Mm. But we hope you got inspired to visit some of these destinations in British Columbia for yourself. Yeah, that's the thing, it definitely gives me huge inspiration and desire to go to Canada, man. And this is only one province, as I mentioned. Tell me if you're from Canada, it's like... For me, like, if you're living in Canada, it's like, why would you want to leave for, like, holidays? There's so many, like, different types of places you can visit. As you see there, there's beaches, there's skiing, there's mountains, there's forests. If anything you want to do for, like, a holiday, you could probably do in Canada, like you would never need to leave. Like I live in Malaysia, but I love traveling all over Asia to like experience different cities, beaches and so on, the similar things. But Canada has it all, but not only does it have it all, it's all at 100% uh, of like the, as much as it can be, like as much as it can be amazing, it's all 100%. So I'm just in awe of Canada. Tell me what you think about these. Have you been to British Columbia? What's your favourite place there to visit and why? Thanks.